I was born here in Anderson County, on the west side of Anderson, all my life. My great-grandfather owned a car lot, Pratt Sospe's used cars, and our family ran that. Growing up, were you a close family, mostly girls? Oh yes, we are all a very close family. I'm very close to my sisters and my mom and my grandmother, aunts and cousins. During the time that he was around, I mean, your grandfather was the used car guy in Anderson County, right? <laughs> yes, sir, he was. All right, let's just set the record straight because some people may not understand your connection. And for those that know Anderson County history, we had a sheriff here by the name of Duck Cooley. That's right. And you got involved with him how? He married my grandmother long before I was born, so he was Papa Duck to me. June Sosby Cooley is who he started dating. That's correct. After his wife died. That's correct. You're a senior, getting ready to graduate. What are your options at this point? What do you think you want to do? Where do you want to go? I couldn't decide. I couldn't decide if I wanted to stay home or, or leave the nest for a while, so I ended up going to the University of South Carolina for a year. I went to Tri-County for the next year, and then I worked a couple of jobs around town, and then I met Kathy Phillips. How, how did, now Kathy Phillips was our former clerk of court. Correct. Your first meeting with her came about how? Actually, my husband was the youth pastor at Star Baptist Church, and that's where her and her husband and her family attended, and right. I met her through the church. And she was a clerk of court? She was. You knew she was a clerk of court? Yes, sir. I needed a job, and I was in between jobs, and my husband was in school at AU, so I needed to be full-time with insurance and benefits. And through a few mutual connections, I found out she was hiring. All right, so you go in and you do the interview. Correct. Do you remember anything about that? <laughs> yes. She interviewed me along with Nancy Rance, who was our chief deputy clerk at the time, and I was a nervous wreck. I do remember being extremely nervous, but she was very funny and laid back, and she offered me the job on the spot. Really? That's correct. So you were pretty excited when you went home? I was. I started out in criminal court. Now what does that mean? I was in the general sessions, entering arrest warrants, bonds, keeping up with bondsmen, that sort of thing. And then when trials would happen, you would be in there too? When I first started out, I didn't work in court. It took about two or three years. Sure. And then Kathy took me under her wing. I started working guilty pleas, started working trials, handling the jury, anything courtroom related. I started here in 2005. By 2008, 2009, I knew this is where I would be forever. I love it. I'm very interested in everything we do. I learn something new every single day, and I love that. And then I guess the best way to put it is our former clerk hit a bump in the road, and uh, we were in need of a new clerk of court. And you get word that the governor has appointed a new clerk. Yes. Do you remember where you were and how you heard and what your reaction was? We were all here at the office when we found out Mr. Shirley would be the next clerk of court. Did you all know him? I personally did not know him. I knew of him. I knew he was the mayor and a banker, but that's all I knew. I had never met him. I think one of the things that endeared him to the courthouse was he came in and said, basically, I ain't got a clue what I'm up to and what I'm going to do. You're going to have to help me. Yes. And how was that transition with you taking the clerk under your wings and helping him understand what this office did? He really did want to learn anything. So I would take him up to trials and he would sit with me, but he just had a way about him that he was always at ease. Nothing ever ruffled his feathers. So it's immediately once I would say, you know, we need to swear in the jury, he would say, hand me the oath. And he immediately started swearing in the juries. He never had any hesitation as far as that concerned. So teaching him was very easy. He Be loved it from, a, from the beginning. Because he wanted to learn. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think he, he realized that he had finally found his calling. Yes. Uh, how many departments do does the clerk's office oversee with regards to what you do? There's two sides of our office, the circuit side, which is the civil and general session side, and then the family court division. Tell me about the family court side of it and the big responsibilities that you and your ladies have. Well, when Mr. Shirley started, we collected every child support 
payment there was is now transitioned out of our office, which is a little bit different. But when it started, we handled every single child support payment there ever was in Anderson. So if I went to court and was ordered to pay child support, I would come in here every month? You could come in here or you could mail it in or it could be drafted from your paycheck through your employer. For those of you that may not know, she came about this job in a way that she absolutely did not want. Our clerk of court, Richard Shirley, passed away suddenly. Tell me how you received the news and your last interchange with the clerk. I got a text in the middle of the night that night and from one of our judges just let me know that he'd had a medical condition. And then about 15 minutes later, I got another text that said that we had lost him and that he had passed away. I had fallen asleep and wasn't awake. It was in the middle of the night, but I woke up at five and read the text and just completely shocked. Mm -hmm. You saw him Wednesday afternoon. That's right. What was going on in the office? Wednesday, he had a daughter's appointment earlier in the day, so he didn't come in until after lunch. Um, typically, when he's not here, I keep the air down. We share a thermostat between our two offices, and so I always keep the air or the heat down and keep it cooler in our office, and he likes it up on high. So he had not been here all day, and so obviously the room was a little chilled. And last year for Christmas, I gave all the people of the office a soft blanket. I love a blanket. And so I'd given everybody one, and he kept it in his office because he said I always tried to freeze him out of his office. And that day he came in, and of course he was cold. So he grabbed the blanket, wrapped up, walked around the office telling everybody that I had made him an iceberg, and he started singing Christmas songs just walking through the office on Wednesday afternoon. And that was the last time you saw him? That was the last time I saw him. I actually, my son FaceTimed me that day and he talked to my son for a second and then five o'clock came and we all congregate by our doors to tell him goodbye before we leave. He always stayed late, made sure the doors was locked. But we always congregate back here to say goodbye to him before we left. So we were all standing by the door. We all said our goodbyes and I turned to him and said, well, I see you in the morning. He said, yes, ma'am. I won't be the first person, but I'll be here in the morning. And that's the last time I saw him. He had wanted you to have this job, and there were plans in the works to make sure that that happened, and his wishes were fulfilled. In taking over this responsibility, how do you see this job? This job is not just a job. I mean, it's, it's my life. I love it. I love working for the citizens of Anderson County. I love every employee within this office. Richard kept the office upbeat at all times. He was always singing or laughing or telling a funny joke. And I just hope that that continues. That atmosphere of our office will continue. Not only that, but the customer service we provide to everybody. He was always about customer service. People are first, and I want to make sure that continues. The list of duties for a mom during elementary school years is long, the month of May. And I remember giving Mr. Shirley a sheet saying, these are the times I'd really like to attend some things for my children at the time. So this was April 4, 2016, and I handed the list and I said, if there's any of these that you wouldn't mind me attending, you know, let me know. And the memo I got back from him, it just makes me smile. It says, thank you for submitting your list of dates and times you'll be absent from the courthouse and attend your motherly duties. After reviewing this schedule of field days and awards days, it's easy to conclude that your two young men are athletic, smart, accomplished, and admired by their peers. Some bosses might be aggravated by our request of this much time. That will not be the case in this office, however. My parents were demanded to be in attendance at school quite often, too by the accomplishments of their athletic, smart, and admired son. And that was Mr. Shirley. Family was always first. He was just as proud of my boys as I was. And obviously his parents were as well for him. <laughs> I think what I'll miss most about Mr. Shirley is his sense of humor. He started here in 2010. He was appointed in late 2010. And I worked with him for 12 years. In the beginning, I worked court with him because I was one of the few people that did that. And then later on, I became his chief deputy clerk in 2014, and we worked hand in hand since then. He had a way in the office that is undescribable. His sense of humor, every memo, every letter, 
every sticky note he put on my desk had something funny. As a matter of fact, one of our last conversations was a football game when Clemson played Carolina. He asked me to please not decorate his office in my garnet and black because he was not a Clemson fan. He was a PC fan at heart. Well, I think he chose well, and I think you're suited for the job, and we want to wish you the best. Well, thank you very much.